is it a case of one step forward, two steps back when it comes to Saudi relations with Israel? Well, last month, the cleric known as the Zionist Imam, Muhammad al-Issa, gave the main sermon during the annual Hajj pilgrimage on Mount Arafat. He's a supporter of interfaith dialogue and even visited Auschwitz. This week, though, a very different sermon from a very different Imam, Imam Saleh bin al-Humaid. Take a listen. Allah, bring annihilation upon the plundering and occupying Jews, for they are no match for you. Bring down upon them your punishment, from which criminals cannot escape. We make you our shield against them, and take refuge with you against their evil. Well, there has been uh, an official statement uh, on those comments uh, from the imam by the mosque, uh, saying that his speech wasn't, in fact, uh, anti-Semitic. Well, to talk a bit more about that, we're joined by Hussein Abu Bakr Mansour. He's a project director for the Endowment for Middle East Truth. Great to have you with us. Thank you for, for joining us. So, uh, two very different imams with two very different messages there. Who will the Saudi people listen to, do you think? Well, it will depend, of course, on the uh, personal inclination of the listeners. Um, Anti-Semitic rhetoric of this kind is not new to the Muslim world. It's actually been the default for, unfortunately, uh, many decades now. What is new is actually the other uh, discourse, a new rhetoric that seeks reconciliation with Israel um, and, of course, with the Jewish people. Uh, this is, of course, the new discourse that is currently being pushed out by, thankfully, uh, some some of the most powerful elites in the region, but it will take a long time to change and uproot a lot of the very deep anti-Semitic rhetoric that was implanted in the region in the last century. Well, in a more positive sign, the U.S. Special Envoy on Fighting Anti-Semitism, that's Deborah Lipstadt, she visited Saudi Arabia earlier this month, and she said she saw that progress was being made when it comes to fighting hatred of, of Jews. Do you agree with that? Uh, yes, absolutely. There is a lot of progress. Uh, it's, as I said, it's not, it's not gonna, going to be quick. You cannot change uh, the cultural disposi dispositions uh, that really penetrated all aspects of Arab and Muslim culture uh, this quickly. I'm actually very happy that this is news now because, unfortunately, anti-Semitism of this sort became the default position. Uh, of both secular and religious Arab culture um, in the last century. So there's a lot of progress that's being made, but given the nature of the problem, its scale, its severity, that progress is going to take a long time. Even in a country like the UAE, that uh, now inarguably is the friendliest Arab and Muslim country towards the state of Israel, if you go to a bookstore in Abu Dhabi and Dubai, you'll still find Mein Kampf being sold. You'll, you'll still find the protocols of Zion being sold. These things are going to stay with us for a while and will require a lot of effort for this new progress that we're making to become the new cultural reality in the uh, in the region. Uh, do you think there's a generational uh, divide in places like Saudi Arabia? Do you think the older generation are more prone to anti-Semitism than the younger people who see perhaps uh, the benefits of working with Israel and, and, and see that some of the, the, the tropes that they've been brought up to believe are not necessarily true? It, there is some generational divide. By the end of the day, this will come, as I said, to the disposition of the different individuals um, and how they like to think about those things. But there is definitely a generational divide. Uh, the new generation of Saudi uh, Saudis, and not just Saudis, actually in all of the Arab Gulf and all of the region, um, have much more uh, a, a, or much different aspirations than the generations before them. They are much more technically savvy. They are connected to the world through, through social media and a lot of them, not all of them, but one can imagine that a lot of this new generation wants to be a part of the world, wants to be part of the new global culture uh, that Israel is, is part of. So there is definitely a generation divide. And this actually doesn't just play out in the area of anti-Semitism in Israel. You see it playing out in the issue of gender relations. Now that Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia is making a lot of progress in the issue of, of gender relations. You see it in the um, idea of social conservatism and how much of religion should be left to the private life of the individual. So a lot of these things are changing. And of course, the new generation had very different um, temperament than the older ones. It's great to talk to you, Hussein. Thank you very much. Hussein Abu Bakr Mansour there.